That's awesome. Thanks, Hull. So for them, it's all about, it's about um, identity and what God says about them and who they are as people. And that they've been, they've, they're in, they've been grafted into a family, which is part of his kingdom. And I suppose that's what I want to speak this morning about. It's just a little bit about family, about inheritance. The big one that was sort of uh, the story that's been on my heart and I feel like this, is, this relates to this whole Jubilee thing, because I feel like, I'll, I'll read the story, most of us know it. It said, a man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So the father agreed to divide up his wealth between his sons. A few days later, his younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money on wild living. About this time, uh, about the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him. The man sent him into his field to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods that he was feeding the pigs looked so good to him, but no one gave him anything. And finally, he came to his senses and he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have enough food to share. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So when he returned home, his father, and uh, so he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son. He embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to his servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf that we have been fattening. We must declare, we must celebrate a feast, for the son of mine was dead, and now he has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And so the party began. My grandmother passed away just a wee uh, month ago, so ago, and she was one of the ones that helped build this or establish this church here, the Leaston Life Church. And I uh, got to speak at her funeral and share the word, and, and I, when I was going about preparing this message, I realized how blessed I was to have a grandmother that knew the Lord, and the things that she established, and, and be able to pass on to me, and or to my mother, and then on to us, and part of that inheritance, I felt, yeah, just like a real sense of blessed, that I, I even if it was the smallest little thing, or the smallest little word, or be able to speak in over my life and have that established in my heart and in my life and be able to apply that as I grew up, you know, I was so grateful for. And part of this inheritance thing, and I, and I spoke to our family about it, it's like we get this inheritance, which is a seed of faith that our grandparents passed on to us. And um, just shared a little bit too about, you know, how we can get this wee seed, but unless we actually apply it and establish it in our life, it's, it's nothing, it just doesn't grow and, and produce anything. And this, this son in this, in this here, in this story, he had that seed, but he wasted it. And he went and spent his life doing what he wanted to do. Living in the pig pen is where he ended up. But the whole time, he was actually still a son. He didn't actually, it's like these kids, it's like they're engra- we're teaching them you're engraved. You're engraved in the palm of God's hand. It's like you're a son. Even if you're sitting there living in the pig pen, you're still a son. And although the circumstances that you're living in might not be great, you are still a son and you have an inheritance and a connection to the living God. And he knew that. And deep down in his heart when it got to the end of it, like when he got to that very point where he's like, man, I need, I need more than this, he was still connected. He can go back. And this is part of what I'm trying to share to my family. It's like, 
we've been given this inheritance, we have that connection. We can always go back. We can always go back. And the bit that's, that speaks to me the most, and I shared a little bit about with the men, it's like God wants to put these clothes on us. And the very first thing, like God sees his son coming from a long way off, and he's like, wow, that's my son. And he goes and he meets him, and he clothes him, the very first thing that he does. Go and get the robe. Go and get the robe. So he takes off all those dirty clothes. Go and get the robe so I can dress my son so he looks like he's part of my family. Even though he knew that he was, but it's like you're not looking like you should be. I'm going to clothe you in in, in the clothes that you need to be wearing. You know, it's been 50 years since this church started up, and I feel like we're coming into this time, like what Wayne's talking about, there's this jubilee. And we're going to go back. And we're going to go back to the Father. And we're going to get robed. He's going to kill the fattened lamb. And we're going to have a feast and we're going to have a party. Because I feel like for some of us, we've forgotten. We've forgotten that we've been connected to the living God. And we've gone away and we've wasted a bit of our inheritance. We've done what we've wanted to do. And now we're like, right, we're going to go back. We're going to go connect back in. It's the Jubilee. He's like, he's like, I'm going to give you back the very things that were always yours, but you never, you never stepped and walked into. The land was always yours. And we're going back to that. You know, it's, I feel really strongly, like I said, it's like the, the spirit that hovers over the place. And it's like when we come in here, and on a Sunday morning, we can tap and we can get those, that wisdom. We can get that peace. That's part of living in the house. That's part of living in God's kingdom. When we're coming in this morning or every morning when we're coming on a Sunday, it's not even just a Sunday. You can do it any time. Knowing that we are blessed, that we have an inheritance, that we can at any stage tap into the, tap into the Father and Take what we need, whether it's peace, whether it's love, whether it's forgiveness. And I feel so stoked that we can impart that and teach that into our kids. So wherever they go from now on, they've had some faith installed and imparted it into their life. So they understand it's like you're forgiven. So no matter what they do now in life, wherever they go, wherever they happen to get into, it's like they know that they're, they're forgiven. They, they can go to, go to God and get that forgiveness. It's not just, I think the other thing I want to say, it's like it's not just, it's not, we're not talking about um, physical genes or physical family lines. You get adopted and grafted in to the kingdom. We all do. We're all family now. We're all brothers and sisters. So when I'm talking about something about you know, like I, I think about my grandmother and what she imparted into, into her family and what she established. But you guys get to do the same thing too, and I see it. It's like, um, it's like Maddie and Peter, you guys establish something, and it, it gets imparted into your children and in, into your grandchildren. Like it made me so, like I was so pumped. We went to um, assembly on, on Friday, and your grandson, man, he got the coolest coolest word, what do they say? We wish we could clone this kid. I wish we could clone this kid and have like 10 of them. That's because of something that you guys established in part. Well, not just you guys, but you know what I mean? We get, we get birthed and, and, and grafted into this family and we get to then establish a legacy that passes on to our kids, onto their kids, onto their kids. You know, my grandmother, on her 90th birthday, she, um, my uncle hooked up this horse on, and a cart and took it for a ride, and she got to have a ride with her child's child, his child's child. My mind can't even, like, fathom that. But God's like, I, I put a blessing 
when I bless you, I bless you for a thousand generations. And we're talking like five generations here. But he's saying, when you can establish a bit of faith and tap into it and apply it into your life, I'm going to bless that and bless it for a thousand generations. See, I've got kids, but I can't even, like my mind can't even get, can't even fathom like their kids, 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 and being able to walk and hold them. You just don't want to take it for granted just like how powerful God is and what when he says he's going to establish something, he establishes it. Had a cool word for Heather too. It's like, and I said this is at Home Connect Group, it's like, there's something that she is being able to establish into her line, into her, her family line further down. And while she, it's like Isaac, uh, Abraham, he, he never actually saw the promise, but the promise was a st- started here. But it was his children's children that actually walked into that promise. Is that all right? I love that part. It's like we're going to have a party. This year we're going to have a party because we're going to know that we, we are walking in the blessing and the inheritance because we're coming back. God's given us back the land. Some of the stuff that we've sold off and we haven't actually um, held on to, we've sold it off and we've gone and done our own thing. No, he's given it back. That song we sung this morning, Jade, uh, speaking Jesus over our family, over our community. So awesome, eh? That we have that ability to speak Jesus and declare. Sue comes in here in the morning and she starts declaring over this house the blood of Jesus. And we can do that now because we know what we've been grafted into and our connections to Jesus and the power that it has. So when we're singing, I just want to speak the name of Jesus, I just see it. Speaking Jesus over Leaston. Speaking Jesus over our families. Speaking Jesus over one another and seeing the power of that begin to change and move our community. I'm going to just get Jade to come up here and and maybe huck out and we're just going to sing that song. If you want, if you want prayer or you want anything, I'm going to invite you up. You can, you can uh, come up and we'll pray over you. But we're going to sing the song. If you want to just stand to your feet, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the inheritance. It's like no matter our situation, Father, we can come back to you, Lord. That we can exchange those clothes, those dirty clothes of living in the pig pens, Father. We can exchange them, Lord, and you put on a robe. Father, that you go and you kill the fattened lamb and we can have a feast, Lord, and we can celebrate, Lord, that you put that ring on our finger, you put sandals on our feet. Father, that we can come and we can party knowing, Father, that you're a good God, that you saw us a long way off and you came running. That you didn't look and say, oh, but you wasted what I gave you. You wasted your inheritance. But you just saw and you just saw your son and you're like, he's home, he's home. We're having a party. Thank you, Father, that your heart, you've always had a heart for Leaston, Father, that when your spirit moved through, it's like you established something here in Leaston. It's like you saw, I want to be there, and you established something here, Father. Father, we ask for forgiveness for the things that we've sold off, Lord. The things that we've let go of and we've gone and we've chased after our own things, Lord. But we thank you, Lord, that we can come back into your house. Lord, that you robe us. Father, that you feed us. And we can live again in your home. We can hold, we can like, we can... Now we can declare your kingdom into our circumstances. We can we can grab and get a hold of wisdom, Father, and apply it into our lives. 
Lord, that we can get a hold of peace and we can establish it, Lord, in our lives and in the lives of people around us. Lord, we can get a hold of love. We know what it is to be loved by you, Lord, and it changes us. That we can walk and we can talk different so it then begins to affect and it change the people in and around us. Father, we know what it is to have grace. We know what it is, Lord, to have walked away, but know that we can come back to you and receive that grace, Father, and we can now show grace to others. You're an awesome God, Lord. You're an awesome God. starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus.
Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Jesus. 